here is a sermon that was preached by Pastor Ballin in one of the Sunday morning services. I want to turn the Bibles to Leviticus chapter 19, verses 33 and 34. Leviticus chapter 19, verses 33 and 34. We'll have that in the screen. Let's read together. And if a stranger dwells with you in your land, we have it in the screen, you can read together. And if a stranger dwells with you in your land, you shall not mistreat him. The stranger who dwells among you shall be to you as one born among you. And you shall love him as yourself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. Here God says, and if a stranger dwells with you in your land, you shall not mistreat him. The stranger who dwells among you shall be to you as one born among you. And you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You know, today when you see Christianity, Christianity lost the flavor of hospitality. When Christians lose the flavor of hospitality, churches lose the flavor of hospitality. And eventually the world will lose it. You know, as I stand here, a couple of things, they just come in my mind and goes. I remember a time when it was, a, it was, you know, it was really painful to see that happening in front of our house. I don't know whether my family remembers that. A very old woman... She was just kind of totally folded herself into one piece of this much long. But still she had life and breath in her nostrils. She was kind of a, you know, in a very ugly clothing and then she was just barely, she has a cloth to cover herself. And she has, she could breathe. She could, you know, speak a couple of things. And we saw her just on the, on the, uh, just on the road in front of our house. And after a little later, we saw a couple of boys coming and trying to ask her something. And she was just responding to them in not their own native language of that state. I don't want to name the states here. But then she was responding to in a neighboring state, the language that belongs to a neighboring state. And I saw these boys coming and kicking her because she doesn't belong to our state. She speaks something else. You know, we lose the hospitality when Christians lose that flavor. That's the reason Jesus said, you are the salt. When salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing. You know, this morning, God is telling us, God is telling the church, it is time to realize the people that those who are dwelling among us, and especially in a nation like Canada, when we leave our neighbors, they certainly, you know, majority of the percentage, you know, they do not belong to our own nation or our own state. They are strangers. When we turn this side and that side, we find come across strangers everywhere. And this morning, God may speak to us and he may tell us how do we deal with the strangers. Exactly the same way as God spoke to them. And he says, when strangers dwell with you in your land, you shall not mistreat them. You consider that they are one among yourselves. They, you consider that they are one member of your family. It is very tough at times. You know, hospitality is very tough at times to practice. But this morning, as we take it further, I believe that God will give us grace and strength and he will speak to us. Let's try to define what is hospitality. Hospitality can be defined as the quality our disposition, our nature, our characteristics of receiving and treating guests and strangers in a very warmly, friendly, and a welcoming, generous way. Hospitality can be defined as the quality or the character of receiving some guests who are strangers and treating them warmly, friendly, in a very generous way. The Greek term, which eventually got translated in English as hospitality, philoxenia. 
Philoxenia, it's a combination of two different words. Philo, philo means love, affection. And you see, xenos, xenos means stranger. Hospitality simply means love of strangers. It doesn't really fit when we use the word hospitality in a very, in a homely atmosphere. It doesn't really fit there. But it fits very well when you show love to a stranger. When you show affection to a stranger, that's exactly the true meaning of hospitality. You know, we believe, we know that hospitality is the most, the most needed virtue of Christianity today. Jesus spoke, in fact, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. This is what he said. Heal the sick. Go and cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. Cast the demon. Freely you have received. Freely give. Freely you have received. Freely give. You know, we, we, are, we are very, very clever and we are very careful when it comes to the matter, when it crosses the boundary of our family. We want to help, we want to give, and we want to make sure that some of our family members, they get benefited out of it. The moment it goes out, that boundary line of what belongs to us, it really worries us. You know, at times we say that it is the money that comes out of, you know, my hard work. How can I let that go that easily? How can I support, you know, orphans who are living across the mile? You know, most of the time I get into the mode thinking that I probably give $50 a month and the need is so great. How I'm going to meet that great need with my $50? So just not give. Not give. You know, this morning God is telling us, freely we have received and God expects us to give freely to others. No, just want to, you know, don't want to get out of the context this morning. So just want to, you know, speak in the, within the context of hospitality. I came across this story of a young girl by name Tracy, just 19 years old, teenage girl. Her dad decided to quit the marriage of 25 years living together with his wife. He decided to quit the marriage and he called this precious girl, Tracy, who was in 19 years, and he said to her, I'm divorcing your mom, but I, am, I will not neglect you, I will not reject you. Always I will be in touch with you, and I will really take care of you. I will provide all that you need. That those promises were made by her dad. But then he did not eventually keep those promises. It became very hard for Tracy even to be in touch with his, her dad at times. The dad, when he left on the day, he packed all his stuff. He rode, he drove out of state and he went and he settled with a new woman after 25 years of marriage. Tracy wanted to keep in touch with her dad and many times he tried to visit him and at times she called, but then the response was not very positive. The response was not really good. Now, despite the hesitation and the busy schedule, everything, one day Tracy decided somehow I'm going to visit my, sorry, I am going to visit my dad. And the day when she visited, dad was standing right there at the door to receive Tracy. Now, initially it was really kind of awkward moment. You know, it was not really done well. It was kind of false moments which is happening between Tracy and dad because they were, you know, away for a while. And eventually they could just kind of settle down as they had a meal together. Now, now suddenly the new wife came home and she just had a glance over Tracy and then she did not say anything and then she just went to her room and she changed her cloth and then she left home for the evening. Now she had two boys and the boys were just all along the, during the evening the boys were in front of the television watching movies and dad was working in his home office. Tracy was just sitting there at the end, near the entrance. Finally, the new wife turned back home and she again passed Tracy, but just not even a simple smile in her face. Now she went and tucked her boys in the bed and she stood at the top of the stairs and she yelled, asked Tracy's dad to come to bed. And Tracy's dad, he went up 
to the, uh, in, the, in the stairs and uh, standing up in the stairs and she looked down to Tracy and said, good night. Probably you can just get into one of the boys' room and sleep there. And dad went to bed. Now Tracy came to the entrance. Her bag is just right there. She picked up her bag and she went into one of the rooms. And she saw the bed was already slept in. And she had seen all the sheets kind of rumpled there and then, you know, folded and it was all dirty. Then there were no pillows, no blankets. And there was no welcome, nothing at that home. Tracy's chest was aching, really. She just fell on the ground. And she cried. She couldn't handle it. And she tried to somehow sleep on her own clothes, keeping her jacket as a pillow. And somehow she managed that night and eventually the morning she got out of the home. Now, later in her life, this is what Tracy says. The memory of that awful, awkward night I spent in my dad's house stayed with me. So did the chest-crushing realization that I was unwanted and unwelcomed. Now, now I have a house of my own with a guest room. I make sure the bed is always made and the sheets are always clean. And there are enough pillows, at least five pillows, kept there in that guest room. I have painted the wall with a beautiful color of warm burgundy and placed a lamp and a couple of photographs there in the table, in the nightstand. My hope is every time when guest comes and stays in my room, the room shouts saying that you are wanted. You are welcome. Come back at any time. To stay with me. And she says, I never want to make anyone feel the way I did that night. I visited the new wife of my dad. Now, I just put that very lightly in a very, 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 very sensitive, very, very short, you know, crisp story of what Tracy went through in her life. Do you know that world that we are living in is inhospitable? It's cruel. It's cruel. You know, some of those things you just want to you know, bring that to the light this morning in the context of our word. Such, so many things are happening in this world. You know, most of you, as we get down to the media, we know human torture, execution methods that are adopted in many nations today, not only against Christ- Christians, even against people who are considered as minority and as strangers. The bullying, harassing and abusing children to death. The public torture by beating up people in front of the society, in front of everybody. Burning alive and stabbing people. You're talking about the inhospitable nature of this world. Torture and abuse of housemates, daughter-in-laws, teenage girls, are everywhere, are seen everywhere. Very, th- very few things that come into the light. But those things, majority of those things are hidden. Beating and torturing of elderly people. You know, how many houses? Elderly people, they lost their sense because, but then they still, their heart beats for some reason. You know, they are taken for granted. At times, you know, they, they, they may not be able to stay in one place. They get into other rooms because they don't know what they do because of their, they are, they are very elderly. How many such parents and grandparents, how many such father-in-law, mother-in-laws are kicked out of their rooms because they enter into their room? Torture and abuse of people are seen today everywhere. Child molestation, child labor, child torture are seen. We are living in a world that is totally inhospitable. And this morning, God is telling us, God is telling to Christians, to his people, his own people who are called by his name, do not you know, harm the stranger who is living in the midst of you. And how do we take it? How do we treat strangers? You know, at times we find it difficult. Are you asking to love strangers? Are you asking to love strangers? How that is going to happen? How that will happen? How is it possible loving strangers? And this morning, I just want you know, all of us to get into the word of God 
And with the help of the word of God, we are trying to understand, Lord, what exactly hospitality is, hospitality means, and what is my role today, Lord God? What do you want me to do, Lord, in order to you know, fulfill your desire on me on this earth? Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. An amazing story here that teaches today the moral of hospitality. Genesis chapter 18, let's read verses 1 through 8. Then the Lord appeared to him, means Abraham, by the turban trees of Mamre, and he was sitting in the tent floor in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground. Abraham was probably in his 80s and 90s. And he is such a very old man, old aged. When he saw three strangers, he came running to them and from his tent door to meet them. And he went and bowed down before the strangers and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. After that, you may pass by in as much as you have come to your servant. They said, do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly make ready three measures of fine meal Needed, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf, which he had prepared, and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree as they ate. You know, this is a model for hospitality. This is an example for hospitality that we, you and I, need to learn from Abraham. Abraham was very well, very, very aged, and he was a very wealthy man of God. And you know, he was just blessed by God. God has promised him he was a man of God. There is no doubt about it. And even though Abraham was wealthy, his wealth did not stop him from being hospitable to some strangers. Even though Abraham was aged, his age did not stop him from being hospitable to somebody who was a stranger. Abraham on the day, he gave the best to the unknown strangers. They just came to him without any prayer notice. They just came to him. You know, as I was reading the scripture, that made me to think. That made me to think about my own life. How do I handle people? How do I handle strangers? And I believe this morning, the word of God speaks to us, right? To our lives. How do we, you know, we handle strangers? Abraham was, you know, just, he was just standing there. Scripture says, as they ate, Abraham was standing there. Now, we are coming from a background where people have great hospitality. I don't think for strangers, but for, you know, for, for friends and families. When we visit a house, when we have meal, the host, really they stand with us. It, it must be a strange thing, you know, for this nation. They just stand with us. They ask, do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want this? Can I put this more? You know, can I help you out? All those things, until we eat, they are just standing next to us. Abraham was doing it for the strangers. He was just standing there as they ate. You know, I just understand that the mind of Abraham and Sarah, they were just in sync. When some stranger comes to our house, husband says, come on, just prepare a meal. And wife says, no. If you want, you come and do it. You brought them. You did not tell me. You did not give me any prayer notice. How do you expect me to do it? I can't do it. You just do it. Come and do it. Just see the oneness of mind. They are aged. Having no children. Nothing. None of the promises have come true yet in their lives. They were strangers and pilgrims. But then, they were just in sync. The moment Abraham asked, Sarah was there right there. To help. You know, this particular thing that we are talking about this morning, hospitality, will not work unless 
both husband and wife come together. Thank God for those who are not having your spouses yet. Maybe you're not married or your spouse is somewhere away. You have all the freedom to be hospitable. You need to come together. Abraham and Sarah, they were just right there together to serve the strangers. But as the story goes, we know that they served the Lord. Lord God was there and among them. Probably the rest were angels. You know, this morning, when we think about hospitality, we have a question in our minds. And at times we come across people saying that, and I used to say that, God did not make me as a person who is having the hospitality nature. It's not really for me. Probably my wife is, she can probably do it. But then, you know, I don't think it's, it's for me. I have heard many stories of men and women, especially men, in their later lives. I have read stories of men and women in their later part of their life telling the story that's not certainly different from my story too. So I thought, you know, I can just put it in whatever way. I can just put it in personal way or I can just put it in a, in a third person way. So it's, it's all, it all fits. Most of us think, especially when we get married, you know, when we start a new family, we all think that the, the, the home that we are living in, it's a, it's a place of seclusion or it's a place of, you know, it's just isolated place only for us. It's a private place. It's a place where we can relax. After we come from work, we just relax. Don't allow anybody into that space. That's our home. You know, we have that concept at times. I had that some point of time. And many people, they have that still. You know, these people are unapproachable. At times, they are even considered as proud people in the society. I don't know where your mind goes at this time. Whether you think about yourself or think about somebody else maybe. Who is considered that unapproachable people? I don't think they like. If we go to their house, I don't think they like. They are unapproachable. They don't want to share things with others. They think that you know, everything is kind of, they preserve everything. They keep everything with them. They have multiple things of the same item because they, do, they use only one. You know, that makes me to, you know, it brings me to a story. It's just a real situation. I, I would have told you maybe a couple of times earlier. My mom got uh, the surgery of her hip replacement in, I think, in 2010. You know, there was a doctor in Chennai. He, he was not a Christian. He was a Hindu man. He did the surgery. So at the end of the surgery, me and my dad, when he was alive, so we went uh, together to make the payment to his house. He's a very well-known surgeon. And uh, there are a couple of other areas, hospitals, doctors, they do not want to do the surgery because of her age and her condition. But this doctor, he volunteered to do the surgery. He said, I will make an attempt. And the surgery was successful by the grace of God. And we went to make a payment. And for amazing thing happened there. For our surprise, for that surgery, as a doctor fee, he took only $40,000. Sorry, 40,000 rupees. We probably went to him with the two, two and a half lakhs, rupees. And he said, he looked at us and said, why do I need that money? He asked me, he, he said two things. He's a Hindu man. He said, sir, at the one point of time, at a time, I can eat one full plate of meal. I can't really eat more than that. Also, he said, how many shirts I can wear at a time? Only one. Only one. I just need only this much because that is my real fees. And I need only this much. These words came from a man who doesn't believe in Jesus. You know, this morning we need to really think, where are we heading? Where is the Christianity, where Christianity is heading towards? We try to keep everything for ourselves. You know, eventually in such families, the selfish dream brings loneliness to the spouse. When husband is like this, the spouse is left alone. Nobody can visit her. Nobody wants to come to their house. Even the relatives, they stop coming to their house. 
she is just all alone, left all alone. She suffers through loneliness. She gets discouraged because nobody wants to come to that house. Because the house is not willing to share anything. Children kind of develop the independency. They just want to be, want to shut themselves in their room and just be there. They don't want to talk to anybody. You know, see the damage that we are making in our families when we are not hospitable. When we don't practice hospitality in our family, it damages our family. But you know, thank God, God opened our eyes. God opened my eyes and many people's eyes to see the rich opportunity that we have for ministry and to disciple and for discipleship and to bring some people into the knowing knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ. It's a tremendous opportunity when we open up our houses, when we open up all, our, all, all that we have, it brings a great opportunity for people to enter, walk into our lives. And today, when I turn back and see, I'm really convinced, convinced that hospitality is not a gift. It's not an option. It is a command. It is a command that you and I need to follow. You know, I thank God for our people, those who are really hospitable. I, I really appreciate all, most of you, all of you. When we come to your houses, you're hospitable. I really honor that. But we need to think, will we do the same thing to somebody who's not your pastor, who's not your friend? Will we do the same thing to some stranger? That's what God expects. That's what God expects. God's example of hospitality is outstanding. You know, we were enemies of God at some point of time. We walked away from God. You know, we are supposed to pay the penalty of our sins. We were totally strangers. But God sent Jesus Christ, His only Son to this earth, to restore that relationship. God reached out and He helped us in our helpless situation. Otherwise, we would have got carried by the things of this world and we may be under the influence and the bondage of the enemy. God saved me and he gave me a new life. I was a stranger, but God was hospitable. When I came to God in prayer, whenever I kneel down and pray, I know that God answers my prayer. If God is not hospitable, God is not extending his hospitality to my life, I can never come to God and call him above Father. And also he is preparing an eternal place for all of us. A stranger like you and me. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 and 3. So 11 to 13. Scripture clearly talks about how stranger, how, what kind of strangers we were. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. I read for you. Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. Ephesians 2, 12. That, listen to this. That all at that time, you were without Christ. At some point of time, we were without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You know, we were strangers. We were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Commonwealth of Israel refers to God's people and all the blessings that God has for his own. We were strangers. From the covenants of promise. But God, because of his mercy, because he is hospitable, he brought us to him. And this morning, God wants us to practice that hospitality in our lives. Just want to say a couple of, share a couple of more words and then we are going to pray. The ministry of hospitality. What I can do? What can I do to practice that in my life? A couple of practical examples this morning. Simple things, what we can do at the church, as a church. Serve as a greeter for the church. <clears throat> Serve as a greeter for the church. You know, it is, it is very difficult for anyone to enter into a church where we don't see a greeter. Especially in our kind of setup, I don't think anybody can open the door and just enter into the church. 
for the first time, if we don't see a greeter there. You can serve to a stranger, as God says, by standing at the door and to greet somebody. I wish I can do that. But nowadays I've been asked to do many things. I want to do that. I don't mind standing outside till the worship starts, till the, till the song gets over, to receive somebody. To receive somebody. Invite visitors and new members into the church as well as to our home. To our home. There are people coming to this nation as immigrants. How many of us would like to open our homes for people to stay with us? There's a family. They are landing here on November 25th. They're looking for a church. Her sis their sister in Alberta, they, she found us and then she spoke to us. Pastor, can you do something? They want to come to Halifax. I said, yes, they can come. I will be there in the airport to receive them. I'll be there to take them to my home. Come. God expects us to treat strangers. I feel guilty at times sitting in my house. The house, we don't need that house for three of us. We have empty rooms. We want people to come and stay there. Thank God, God has given us the one mind for all three of us. God wants us to serve the strangers. God wants us to serve by hosting small groups in our homes. Open the door. God wants us to identify those who are lonely, those who are neglected, those who are sick, those who are drug addicts, those who are under alcohol, those who are aged, those who are widows and orphans, those who are oppressed by the society. God wants us to look into the local causes that we see around. God wants us to extend our hospitality to them. It is something that we need to do within our mind. Make a decision in the, with the help of God and come into agreements with God and say that, Lord, I want to do this, Lord. I want to do this. It is something that we need to respond. We need to react to this. Think about the global causes supporting missionaries, orphans, disaster relief. So many things are happening. Lord, what can I do? This morning I pray that our minds be tuned to the voice of God, voice of the Holy Spirit, so that we will keep thinking in what way I can bless somebody. In what way I can bless somebody. You know, this hospitality that we are talking about, it takes us beyond human life. Just want to read two scriptures, beautiful scriptures from Luke chapter 16, verse 9. We have that in the screen. Luke chapter 16, verse 9. God is asking us to use the wealth of this world to gain friends. Luke 16, 9 says, I tell you, Jesus said this, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves. So that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. God is asking us to use the wealth that we have to gain friends. What does it mean? What does it mean? God is asking us, to use our abilities, use our skills, use our money that we have. Probably just host a dinner to somebody, some new family coming into the city. You know, we are not just trying to do something which is practiced across. We are trying to do something which the word of God commands us to do. By doing it, we will earn friends. And eventually scripture says, you will be welcomed into the eternal dwellings. When we go to heaven, scripture says, they will be standing there. And they will be welcoming us along with us, along with them, into the eternity. Hebrews 13, 2 says, welcoming strangers is very, very important. Scripture says, Hebrews 13, 2, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. Very clear scripture is, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Without knowing it, people have received angels into their house and angels were brought into their house as they were extending hospitality to the strangers you know i remember an incident that my dad used to share <clears throat> he just went out on the streets on the one day to buy you know a couple of things from the shop and as he came back he saw a merchant who was sitting there at the side of the road and he was selling fruits <clears throat> and the merchant was selling fruits there 
And my dad came there and he saw one elderly person in white dress. One elderly person. He was just bending down and extending the five rupee note to the shopkeeper and asking him for some fruits. And my dad was seeing him and the shopkeeper became very angry and he said, what can I give you for five dollars? And he threw the five dollars on his face and said, I cannot give you anything five dollars in this age. What can you find for five dollars? That's what he said. And when he said that for five dollars, just do not get distracted. Just, when, when you, you know, give five dollars, I cannot really give anything to you. He just threw that note to the, and onto the face of that elderly man. My dad couldn't handle it. He just took a 50 rupee note and then gave it to the merchant and said, give something to this man. And he gave fruits. And he bought that fruits. My dad turned to see him. Nobody was there. Nobody was there. Scripture says, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Hospitality takes us into the heavenly realm. Not only that, it helps us even to get united with God. To deal with angels. God's presence. Finally, I don't want to just miss the flip side of hospitality too. There is a flip side of the coin. First Peter says, First Peter 4, 9, Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. You know, hospitality, most of the time, it doesn't reward us back. It doesn't reward us back. Most of the time, when we want to be hospitable, you need to go an extra mile. It costs you money. It costs you time. It costs you effort. At the end of the day, God doesn't want us to come back and grumble saying that I did so much to this person. He's not even turning to my side and saying hi to me. God doesn't want us to say that. That's the reason the word of God is saying in Peter. Peter is writing, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Without grumbling. The human tendency is to expect return. But God doesn't want us to murmur. God always wants us to give, 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 and it will be given to you. Give, it will be given to you. And at times we have the question, Lord, if I continue to do this, people at times take advantage of me. I keep helping, they keep receiving. What do I do it? Questions. Lord, if I welcome strangers into my house, there is a great risk of doing that. What do I do? Questions. Ephesians 6, 7 says, So wholeheartedly, as if you are serving the Lord, not for people. Not for people. All that God is expecting us to serve, the rest of it God will take care. God wants us to extend the hospitality to people today, especially to the strangers. Abraham was a man of God. He extended hospitality to those three strangers on the day. And that was a blessing for him. Lord God continued to spoke to him and ex- help him to see many things that God has already planned. And this morning, I believe God has spoken to us. It is time that we need to react. We need to respond to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Shall we just close our eyes? Hope you are blessed by this teaching. Please write to Pastor Balan Swami Nathan at balan at hipm.org. God bless you.